What we're going to do today is to help students learn, and much more important, help them to learn to use benefit cost analysis in all aspects of their lives. In order to do that, we're going to investigate a very difficult economic problem, one that probably requires a PhD in finance, but we're gonna see if we can't get through this without that kind of educational background. This is called the decision-making apron. And it's safe to say that absolutely everything, I want to repeat that, absolutely everything that economists do can be placed on this apron. Remember when we talked about the definition of economics, we said that it's about using your resources as effectively as possible to achieve your goals. Well, the very first pocket on this apron says resources and goals. So let's take this very difficult example and see if we can work through it to see how Sonia is going to achieve her goal. This is Sonia. She's a third grader and her birthday is coming up. Her parents have told her that within reason they're willing to finance her birthday. And so she's trying to use benefit cost analysis to work with her friends to figure out what's the very best way that they can use these incredible hunks of human capital to have the best birthday possible. So we've identified the goal and we've identified the resources available to achieve that goal. Now they've narrowed this very difficult economic issue down to two alternatives. Sonia's a dinosaur nut. She's crazy about dinosaurs. She knows uh, Diplodocus and Brontosaurus and of course Tyrannosaurus Rex. And there's a dinosaur museum not very far from her home. And so one of the alternatives that she has considered is a party at the Dinosaur Museum. Her parents have told her that uh, they'd be happy to take them, she, she and a few of her friends, to the museum. They've also said, we're happy to do a birthday at home. And so, another alternative under consideration is a birthday at home. So, these folks have gone fairly well through the first couple of steps of benefit cost analysis. They've identified the goal and the resources available to achieve that goal, and they've identified two alternatives, both of which will help them achieve that goal. Now what they have to do is take a look at these two alternatives and consider the advantages and the disadvantages of them both. So in a class discussion, students would decide what is or what are the benefits of the dinosaur museum? And they might come up with something like this. They might say, well, first of all, she's a dinosaur nut. So this is going to be very exciting for Sonia. And her friends are sort of into dinosaurs too, so that's a good thing. Um, at the dinosaur museum, you can sometimes see they have one of these moving dinosaurs that roars at people. That's a lot of fun too. So there'll be a little action involved. Um, they'll be able to get out of the house. Um, maybe that's it, there could be more. Now they wanna look at the disadvantages of the dinosaur museum. The first one, and this is very important, is they can't bring any food into the dinosaur museum. So that means that the ice cream and cake is out. And this isn't either an or, by the way. Her parents have said, you either go to the dinosaur museum or you come to the house, not both. So, um, the ice cream and cake is out because you can't bring food into the dinosaur museum. They're going to have to be quiet, well-behaved. They can't be messing around. That's eh, not such a good thing. Um, 
and that might be it too. I mean, they, they might list many more advantages and many more disadvantages, but, but those are some that have come up in the past. So we've, we've analyzed the first alternative, which is the Dinosaur Museum. Now let's take a look at the party at home. One of the good things about the party at home is that they will, in fact, get ice cream and cake, and her dad makes the best birthday cake in town. So that's a tremendous advantage. Second, if they have a party at home, she can invite more friends. And more friends mean more presents. That's a tremendous advantage. Um, they'd be able to jump and run around and uh, within reason have a pretty good time. So those are advantages of, um, of the party at home. But there are some disadvantages. If she invites a bunch of friends, they're going to start getting into her stuff. Um, and, you know, in situations like that, things get broken. So she's putting all of her prized possessions at risk. Um, once the party is over, she's going to have to help her parents clean up, and that's a pain. Uh, and again, uh, children might list more advantages and more disadvantages. So now what we've done is we've analyzed the two alternatives. What are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of both alternatives? After this general class discussion, we asked the class to vote. How many of you are for the Dinosaur Museum? And I have to tell you that usually the Dinosaur Museum doesn't get many votes. Uh, how many of you are for the party at home? Let's assume that the majority decide they want Sonia to have her party at home. As soon as that decision is made, we now know that from our alternatives, one, the party at home, becomes the choice. So the choice is the alternative that's selected. It's the one they decided upon. Um, it's what they did. And so now the question is, some people would say, as far as Sonia and her friends are concerned, this was free because her parents were paying the money cost. But was it free? What did they have to give up when they decided to have the party at home? The answer is pretty clear. They're not going to the Dinosaur Museum. So what did they gain? They gained the party at home. What did they lose? They lost the Dinosaur Museum. The cost of the choice is the Dinosaur Museum. And this is why economists say, we don't say there's no such thing as a free lunch because your students may very well walk into the cafeteria and see a lot of people getting lunch and not paying any money for it. So we don't say that. We say there's no such choice as a free choice. And you know, there can be no argument. If you're selecting between two alternatives and you select one, you didn't get the other. So the opportunity that you gave up when you chose the party at home, the opportunity that Sonia and her friends gave up, was the Dinosaur Museum. And that's why economists call that opportunity cost. It's the opportunity given up when you select an alternative as your choice. All right, so that's Sonia, third grader. Let's take this to a middle school level. Some of you are familiar with the Twilight series. Um, and I'm just going to run through it very quickly for you. This is Bella. Uh, Bella is a junior in high school. Uh, Bella is an incredible bundle of human capital. She's very, very talented in many different ways. Um, in some ways, she's not so talented. Uh, she's not very coordinated. Uh, she tends to trip and fall over herself a lot, but she's an incredible bundle of human capital. Uh, Bella is trying to decide. Her goal is to um, choose a man to be happy with for the rest of her life. And she has narrowed the alternatives 
to two. The first is Jacob. Um, now, she's known Jacob since she was very, very young, uh, and she thinks of him really more as sort of a, a, a little brother than she does as uh, the man she wants to live with for the rest of her life. But uh, he has some incredible uh, characteristics that we'll talk about in just a minute. So alternative one is Jacob. Alternative two is this guy that she met in biology lab. Um, and he's pretty intriguing. And she thinks that he might be sort of cool to spend the rest of her life with. So we'll put him in the other alternative pocket. So now let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of both Jacob and Edward. And I'm going to use the results of a survey uh, that I administered to some middle school students. 